Hi, I'm Damien Bradfield, co-founder of WeTransfer, and my episode of Secret Leaders is out now. If you look at WeTransfer, I mean, go to the site, 95% of the site belongs to someone else. It's an ad for Louis Vuitton or it's an ad for Richemont or something. What we have in actual fact is about that much and a couple of bits across the top. So what we did is quite remarkable and it, and it's, and it is the brand, but it's mostly the relationships. So the, the, the way that we interact with people, the generosity that we've given, I think is this um, spoken word marketing campaign. The base has been going for 15 years that it has created this incredible amount of trust and generosity towards us that um, I'm super proud of. It's really difficult to, to create. But if I'm a new founder today and I want to start a brand, what are the tips? I come to you for some advice. What are the things that you would impart upon me so I can do this right? So caveat that when we started, it was easy. So, you know, we had a very, very easy runway to building up some success. Um, the marketplace is so different today. But if I look at if I look at brands that I think are doing really well, they're doing it always in a nonconformist manner. So none of them are doing the playbook mm. because the playbook is so obvious. And unfortunately, because even of the notion of the playbook, it's shared by everyone and read by everyone. So <clears throat> unless you're operating at fucking light speed, you're behind the curve. The only way you can really stick out today is by being nonconformist. You have to take your time, take a step back, look what everyone else is doing and then try to do it differently. We have this conversation about brand the whole time and um, if I think of what are the true great brands of the world, they're ancient. They're like Coca-Cola and they're no longer related or tied or connected to any one individual. These have gone so long that they stand alone on their own because of the way they conducted themselves, the way that they've appeared in, in media and uh, social media, whatever. A brand today isn't a brand yet. So if you're starting a company today, you are the brand. You the individual, the founder, the team, the 20 employees, 50 employees, you are the brand. The way that you conduct yourselves, the way that you act, the way that you talk, the culture that you create, that's the brand. It's not a logo and it's not anything else around it. It's you. So if you want to build a great brand, you have to live it, breathe it, do it, make it, talk about it, You know, show up in exactly the way you want it to be. And you have to do it with consistency all the time. And if that breaks, if you decide that you're going to flip and try something else because you've read a playbook from someone else about how to quickly acquire a million customers with just 10 million quid, you're screwed. It's going to go wrong. And I think when we first started, we were seeing companies start, raise and sell in like three years. That's not happening anymore. I mean, you could have done that. It's not a great brand. It's never going to be a great business, but you could have flipped a business like you could flip a house. It takes 10 years to build a company. It takes way more to build a brand. And I think you, you, you've got to live it yourself and be willing to put yourself into it. And people buy you or they buy Steve Jobs and buy Apple. Mm -hmm. They're buying those individuals that represent the values that, that people can associate with. And that's, I think, grossly underestimated. Um, and... It's not for everybody. You know, I I learned to do this. I didn't I didn't like to do it in the beginning, but I learned to do this, to talk mm. about it, to talk about the brand. An awful lot of young startups, founders, artists don't want to do it. You know, they find it really difficult. It's awkward, it's uncomfortable. You don't want to be in, in the limelight and talking about this stuff. Okay, then you've got to find some other way of doing it because if, if you're not, it's it's nearly impossible. One of the biggest challenges I've actually had growing heights is exactly the dichotomy you just said of uh, performance and brand. And you do need to try new things. You need to get new customers. You need to be out there and testing new things because not everything works. And at the same time, you have this desire to maintain this concept of what a brand is and the consistency. And it's amazing advice I got from someone. I wish I could remember who it was, but they said an example of a great brand, how you know you're building a great brand is your marketing team are really bored. They're bored of doing the same thing over and over again. They're bored of the similarities, the monotony of their weeks and days and months. 
if you're always doing new stuff every single week, you're not building a proper brand. So you need your marketing team and yourself to feel a little bit bored. And if you feel that way, you're probably building something consistent over a long period of time that will outlast the guys that are doing new stuff all the time. And I was like, that is exceptionally profound and really interesting framing for the challenge of building a brand. You're welcome. <laughs> no, it wasn't me. Really. Oh, would, would have been the deepest thing you've ever said, for sure, yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs>